This is actually our first video podcast interview for the show. Oh, wonderful. Because we're talking about things like sex and stuff that people are doing behind closed doors, and a lot of people don't want to show their faces. Got it. But Miss Brittany Andrews has no problem showing her face. Or her boobs. <laughs> Or that killer body she's got. All right. She's an adult industry icon with over 30 years of experience in the adult industry. That's a long time to survive an industry that can be kind of rough, yeah? You may look at her and say she's just another pretty face. Wrong. She's very well read. She's not afraid to get into politics. Uh, but for this program, we're going to talk about the fun stuff. Is that okay with you, Brittany? <laughs> yeah, let's do that, boo. Okay. okay. <laughs> Is sex any different when you're having it for pleasure versus doing it for work? Hells to the yes. Mind you, I've been a sex worker for 30 years. I've had a lot of different work in sex, <laughs> right? So, um, yeah, you know, I've always said, like, you've got, how did I used to put it in my in my youths? Um, you ha you've got slaves, you've got boy toys, you got boyfriends, you've got um, acting partners, you've got clients, you know, and there's different kinds of sex that you have with each one of those individuals, right? And I think out of all of them, the only one that's not sex work is probably going to be, you know, your, your fuck buddy. If I mentioned the fuck buddy, I may have forgotten the fuck buddy. Uh, oh, and of course, the one night stand that rarely mm. ever leads to a twofer. <laughs> and if you're a one night stand, don't think you're going to become a twofer because that doesn't happen <laughs> automatically. And if you're twofer, you might have a chance to become a boyfriend, but nobody usually ever makes it to a twofer. But, you know, out of the, the range, you know, most of them are going to be sex work. There's a few of them that are, you know, on the pleasure side. Um, and, you know, and now I'm a sober woman as well. I've been doing this sober thing for, oh, Lord, almost 10 years. Oh, and, nice. you know, like a huge aspect of like when I got sober, that was really difficult with my sobriety is probably the exact opposite of what most people think it's going to be. I always was sober when I had work sex, right? And then when I could relax and not have to care about, you know, the camera and how I looked and, you know, half the time I was, you know, producing and directing the film or if it was, you know, full service sex work, you know, making sure that I was safe in my environment or whatever it might be. When I could just get fucked up, relax and like have tons of orgasms all night long. So when I got sober, like it was it was difficult because sober sex was always to me work sex. Hmm. And then, you know, having a couple of glasses of wine, that was more my relaxed, enjoyable, personal sex. So mm -hmm. yeah, there's there's a huge difference between um work sex and personal sex. And you know, and then let's just talk about work sex. You're usually never having sex with somebody that you would have sex with for free. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Wait. Okay. Yeah. I. I guess. Do you ever orgasm when you're having work sex? Oh, all the time. I mean. Oh, really? Yeah. 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 But it's like the difference between. What's the best way to explain it? Like, if you've ever gone to bust a nut, and then decided to hold back, and then you decide, okay, now I'll finally have it, and it comes out like, eh. And you're like, ah, oh, I really should have just busted a nut the first time. It would have came out like much better, right? So like the the eh is kind of like the work sex orgasm. It's not like, huh. you know, it's nothing to tell your mother about. How do you identify? Are you bisexual? No, I'm very straight, but mm. I do like cute um, Asian girls. I know it's not PC to fetishize <laughs> a particular uh, race, and I'm still trying to figure out how to do that politically correct. And if somebody knows, let me know, because I do like to be politically correct. I just haven't figured out exactly how to say that quite yet. And I've brought it up to other people, and they haven't told me yet either. But anyway, <laughs> so I'm just going to spit it out. You can yell at me later. But I do love cute, adorable Asian girls tied up to the seat and to like torture them and do all kinds of like, you know, things of that nature. Um, for, but that's well, probably but, it. But for, for free or as part of work? Well, yeah, I probably wouldn't do it on my free time all that much anymore. 
But when uh-huh. I was in my youth, you know, and I was still exploring my sexuality, I've already done it. So I don't need to do it like anymore. But I still aesthetically, you know, I love, um, you know, good rope bondage, uh, shabar- uh, shabari and all different other kinds. You know, I just think it's so beautiful. I've always loved Asians. My entire family does. My my brother's got a Chinese wife. My nephew's got a Japanese wife. My other nephew's got a Filipino <laughs> wife. My father married a Filipino. I've always had a lot of Asians in my life as well. My, my favorite are Japanese by far. Um, I speak a little <laughs> Japanese. Oh, you do? Um, so for all you Asian men out there thinking that, you know, hot blonde bitches don't like you, it ain't true because this one does. And I like, you know, and I do love Asian women too, to a certain extent. Uh, let's talk about the sex work. All right, let's all right. talk. What does that cover? Because what, I hear sex work, I'm I'm thinking like more on the prostitution side, Uh-huh. but it covers a lot more than that, right? Absolutely. Uh, Sex work pretty much covers anything that has to do with making money within the sex industry. So that means if you have an OnlyFans and you show your nipples, girlfriend, you're a sex worker. Um, If you're a stripper, you're a sex worker. Webcam model. If you're a dominatrix, you're um, a sex worker. If you're a full service sex worker, you're a sex worker. If you're a porn star, you're a sex worker. It's ripe with various aspects of working within the sex worker community. Mm-hmm. I remember when that word first came out, I believe it was from Carol Lee in San Francisco. And I remember, oh, you know what? I got goosebumps right again right now. I remember when it first came out, I knew it was going to be huge for those of us that are sex workers. And I remember so many porn stars hating it because it takes away the ego and something called hierarchy, which I don't believe in. At the end of the day, we're all sisters, whether you're a street sex worker or whether you're, you know, making um, $250,000 a month on your OnlyFans. We're all sisters in sex work. We're a community and we're a voice. That's what the word sex worker finally gave us, the ability to uh, organize with uh, legislation and policy and to have advocacy and to have a voice so that we can't be stamped out by people that don't agree with our lifestyle, uh, that don't agree with our business, and that don't agree with us having a voice and want to put us down as victims. Of course, there are victims. And when you can separate consensual sex workers from those that aren't, you can put your time and resources into those that actually need the support and help instead of hurting a lot of individuals um, that are consensually loving what they do and absolutely having a place on this planet that is divine and in perfect order. Every goddess has, you know, her own work to be done on this planet. Do you still do full service sex work? Um, I'm not going to get into that particularly because, you know, there's kinds of different kinds of legal issues around that, but, you know, I am in full support of full service sex worker, sex workers, and many individuals that are in the adult industry do also do full service sex work as well. At this time, it's still not decriminalized. Um, and don't let um, any of the politicians out there tell you that the Nordic model is a good model to move forward with. It is not. Full decriminalization is what all sex workers need in order to have a safe, healthy working environment. Mm-hmm. Well, and who are we kidding? So we we know what happens, right? Yeah. We know a lot of people uh, are involved, probably even the same people who say it should not be Absolutely. Realize, right? We I know, know politicians have never gotten hookers no, before. No, never. No, <laughs> uh, so, so, so we know the truth about that. Yeah, exactly. Um, I've talked to a lot of couples who are in the lifestyle. You know what I'm talking about, right? Like yes, swingers. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Swingers. And many of them uh, like having a sex worker, bringing a sex worker into the relationship so that they can explore that without the concern of, is he going to fall in love and leave me? Um, have you ever heard of that kind of arrangement? Yeah, I absolutely agree. That's a way safer way for the relationship. If you care about your relationship and you care about each other, don't fuck your friends. <laughs> it's like, don't go into business with your family. Don't fuck your friends, right? You know, kind of a common rule, not to say it can never work out, that you can't do business with your family and that you can't fuck your friends. But there's more likely to have a lot of things go wrong and feelings get hurt and things happen. Um, if you are going to fuck your friends, you know, do it after you've had some experience um, just having sex with um, kind of 
in a safe environment. And I think that's what a sex worker provides is a safe environment. You can tell the bitch to go when you want to, <laughs> right? Because right? I've done it myself with um, partners, right? It's like, okay, let's get a girl. But I like knowing that I have the control that I can tell him we're done with her. It's time for right. her to go. Like it's all, it's right. got to be about me right now, right? Like my feelings are hurt or something happened. Like I, it's good for me to be able to say, bitch, be gone. Give her right. ten percent money, right? <laughs> and she's like, "Sweet, I only had to be here a half hour, and I got paid for an hour. See you guys next time, right? No feelings hurt." What is the going price these days, and what does it depend on? Well, it really depends on um, typically uh, notoriety, right? So okay. your average porn star is going to be probably around a thousand dollars an hour. Right. Some of your on average porn stars are going to be around three thousand dollars an hour. Your average local sex worker in the Midwest is probably going to be one hundred and fifty to three hundred dollars for an hour. And then maybe in the Midwest, if you've got somebody really beautiful, that's kind of got some local notoriety, maybe up to five hundred dollars an hour. So, you know, and then you've got celebrity rappers, you know, that have kings in Dubai that are, you know, kings in Saudi Arabia and stuff that are getting them that have got really high prices because a lot of uh, kings over there love themselves some wow. And um, <laughs> the, the prices range across, across the world, typically based upon the, the notoriety of the pussy. How do people, like, how do you find, you know, unless you've already got someone you regularly go to, right. or if you're someone who frequents, how does someone who hasn't used a sex worker before find one and not get in trouble? I don't know if I'm <laughs> supposed to be giving this kind of advice out, but hypothetically, I would um, suggest to try to find review sites online and find a sex worker that's been highly reviewed because then you're not going to be getting a bait and switch. You're not going to have somebody that's going to be ripping you off. You're not going to have somebody that's law enforcement, you know, all of that type of thing. One of the reasons why a lot of... Um, they like to call themselves hobbyists, individuals that see full service sex workers uh, like to um, get porn stars is because you can't do a bait and switch, right? Like mm -hmm. there's only one of you. It can't be like one blonde bitch that's in the in the the ad and then you send somebody out. It's like, no, if you, you're getting Brittany Andrews, you, you, you can only have Brittany Andrews, right? A lot of guys alone just like getting celebrity um, sex workers just because of the bait and switch aspect of it. But you know, it's it's important, like anything in life, to do your research. Uh, don't do it impulsively. Uh, don't like just see some hot chicken in an ad and be like, yeah, let's go for her. Do your research so that everybody um, is safe. And also, if you're going to be seeing a reputable sex worker, you're going to have to go through a verification process. You want uh, somebody that does do this because it shows that they are a professional and they care about your well-being and their own well-being. So um, just be prepared that you're going to have to give occupation information or you're going to have to have multiple escort references or you're going to have to be a member of a verification uh, website. How safe is this information that they, you're giving out? I mean, is it pretty safe? Yes. I mean, at the end of the day, it's important to do your research, you know, find an agency that's got a good reputation, uh, but really do your research, you know, um, and then all of the verification websites, you know, I've never heard anything going down with them. And I've been in the business, like I said, 30 years. So, and it's understandable, you know, you're going to be worried about these types of things. However, there's a price for everything, right? I also recommend have a separate phone, you know, like do things, you know, this is how I feel, you know, A, I don't believe that anybody should cheat or anything like that, but it's also none of my damn business, your arrangement. But if you are going to make sure that you're not hurting somebody else involved that doesn't necessarily need to be like cover up your tracks in a respectful way to that individual. Uh, I know a lot of men that have got like an Amazon locker with another phone in that Amazon locker. Like, you know, just, you know, be, be smart about how you're going to go about and do things. Let's talk about safety, because I think one thing that a lot of people who aren't familiar or who don't approve of these kind of arrangements, the first thing they talk about is STDs and, oh, I wonder, you know, how many people she's, you know, blah, blah, blah. Can you talk yeah. about the safety measures 
that you guys take and how safe it is to actually use a sex worker? Once again, like I said, there's different types of sex workers. So let's just take a dominatrix, for example. Most dominatrixes never even have any sexual intercourse with clients whatsoever at all. Um, There's a lot of dungeons out there. Like the only intercourse they might be having is with a strap on. In his ass, of course. Yeah. (laughs) Only Pagan going on around there. So, um, So like a dominatrix is that, right? So porn stars, we get tested every 14 days and we get full PCR DNA testing, which is like most regular, like we like to call them civilians, they get something called a Western blot, Eastern test. And that's something like 86% correct with a six month window period. The testing that porn stars get is like 99% correct with like a three day window period. So if we go to do a shoot, we have to have a a, a two-week test in order to be able to shoot. And now with COVID, we have to have a 24 to 48-hour COVID test as well. Mm. Now, your, uh, say, run-of-the-mill average sex worker, that's a completely different thing, right? Being that it's not decriminalized, there's no um, legislation on how they run their business or their body. So that's taking a higher risk and a higher chance. However, once again, if you're going to a model that's got really good reviews, if she's got really good reviews, she probably likes what she does, lives a good, healthy life, and is going to take care of her body, mind, and soul, um, and is going to be somebody that uses protection at all times. Also, too, if you've got um, an escort that's got a drug or alcohol problem, um, they're probably less likely to always to be making sound decisions for their body and uh, health and mind. If you're a guy and you want a wild chick and not use a condom, then <laughs> which that's what you're gonna get. Which there's many guys that are out there that are like that. That's what. But if you're um, a, a healthy couple that's looking to explore. Uh, you're going to want to look for an escort that's got really good reviews, nice pictures, um, have a conversation with her while you're doing the verification. Um, Of course, you can't ask a lot of questions um, to that particular escort because once again, it's not, it's still a criminalized activity here in the United States. So you need to be um, aware and careful when you're talking to Um, the model of your choice about the things that you say in conversation, because you don't want to be putting her at risk. And one other thing, some models are more than willing to do like a, like a coffee date for a couple hundred bucks as well. So at that point you could, you know, also do something like that of where you had more questions to ask, you know, so sometimes that's on the table. And if it's that pertinent to you that you have certain questions that you need to ask, that can be something of that, where you could offer her, you know, that scenario as well. What is it that a man does that really just drives you crazy? Like good crazy. Oh, good crazy. Yeah. Good, good crazy. When a man understands that the pussy gets wet, not from touching me, but from stimulating my mind. Men are all kinds of fucked up in the head about female sexuality. You know, they think that grabbing you, touching you, kissing you, waking you up in the morning with this thing poking at you is automatically going to make you horny. No, bitch, that's not how it works. The female brain, it's a book, read it, buy it, learn it. Um, (laughs) You know, we need to have, we have need to have mental stimulation. Um, You know, so many marriages, like they, they go to shit with the whole sex thing because guys are going like this. Uh, uh, let me grab your tit. You're not horny by my belly grabbing your boob. What's wrong with you? Dude, seriously, step the fuck off. You're nasty. You haven't even like gotten anywhere near to making me horny. Like you need to get into my mind. You need to learn what I find to be sexually uh, invigorates me, right? That's going to like get me stimulated mentally. Once my mind is going, tell me some role plays and storylines, um, that yeah. type of thing. Then, 
then we can talk. I mean, before you ever even touch me, like I should be in a place to where I'm like, <gasps> yes, like you want to him to touch you. Yes, right? exactly. And that's it. the thing that men do not understand. And it, I think it's really important that as women, we need to like slap them upside the head and give them a, like, Pshh! listen, <laughs> this is what we need. Damn it. You're doing it all wrong. And you have been for centuries and we're not taking it anymore. What is the biggest complaint that you hear men make, whether it's their wives or their situation at home or their whatever? What What is the big complaint that men often uh, have? They don't that that the other partner doesn't want to do it, right? So they're not having enough sex. Well, and, and they're not and, and they're, because they don't know how to make the girl horny. They right? don't realize it's their own fault. Exactly. Mm-hmm. They really think that this. Let me grab you. Let me touch you. Let me pull your nipple. <laughs> they think that that makes women horny. And it's like, no, that disgusts us. That's like sending us like an unsolicited dick picture. They just have oh. no. It's the same why? thing. This, why do like, why do men? I'm sure you receive a lot of just crap because I'm on the news and I receive yeah. those kind of pictures. And it grosses me out. Like the first thing I think of is, oh, really? He thinks this is going to do it? Um, I, 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 I don't understand dick pics, actually. Well, you know, and now it's become a really big thing on OnlyFans of, you know, and I hope that I hope that all of us models on OnlyFans start saving the rest of the female population because, you know, now it's all these dick rating videos and pictures that we do now. I have a dick rating scorecard. We do the we do I have like 10 different ways to do dick ratings, you know, like a one to 10 is one price. Then a dick rating scorecard is like another one. And then the dick rating picture. Uh, review and then a dick rating video. Uh, and then there's like five different custom video types that you can have for a dick rate. So I'm hoping that now that every, you know, chick on the planet has got an OnlyFans and we're all doing dick ratings, <laughs> that men now know where to go to take their dick pics and pay women for it. And we can all live in a happier, uh, more civilized society because of it. Hey, do, does size matter? Yes, absolutely. Oh. And you know what? At the end of the day, once again, men are getting it wrong there too. Mm. Every woman will tell you on this planet, we it's not about length. It's about girth. That's true. It's That's about true. girth. It's not about yep. length. It's yep. If you're going to film me, I don't care if you've got like a 10 inch long pencil, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody wants that. That's just going to hurt. <laughs> But if you got a shorty with some girth, you're like, yeah, I can, yeah, I can work with that. I can work with that. Right. You know, I know, especially for myself too, like the older I got, like, I'm like, eh, you know, if it's going to my ass, I like them to be big. But if it's going in my pussy, it's like, eh, not so much. Really? Yeah. You would think it was the other way around. Yeah. But I think it more has to do with my sobriety thing. Like, um, cause I find, you know, I just did a scene yesterday with um, the lovely Shawn Michaels, who he's been in this business longer than I have. And the last time we did a scene together was almost 25 years ago. And we're actually going to do a sit down to go hand in hand with the um, with the scene and talk about. Uh, sy- uh, systematic racism in the adult entertainment industry. Sean My- Sean Michaels is a black man, um, and talk about the evolution of racism in adults because there's really not too many of us that are left that could have that conversation, right? right. From a, a, a white person and a black person and their perspective in the business, and so we just thought it would be a really good idea to utilize, you know, us not doing a scene that long and then having that dialogue and that conversation. He recently went public that he's into T-girls, transgender. Oh, uh uh-huh. How can you be a sex worker for 30 years and not get freaking bored, right? I'm like, dude, I totally get it that you're into T-girls now. It's like, you've been in the business how many years? Like, there's a certain level of like, okay, what's the next thing? What's the next thing? You know, what's going to excite me? What's the next thing? I way prefer anal sex now because just vaginal sex, you know, sober can be just so boring because I still Uh have a neuro association of it as being work sex, you know? Hmm. So if you shove something really big in my ass, it's like, oh, this is entertaining. Oh, 
Yeah. Now, I feel that. I feel that. Yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how much longer, you know, because I'm starting to shove pretty big things in my ass. And, you know, that can only go so far, too. Right. One of the things as a as a as a older blonde MILF in the business, you're going to get two kinds of scenes. Right. And, you know, whether it's politically correct or not, it's the facts. So don't hate me for what is. Um, And what is, is you're going to have scenes with like boys that look like they're 15 years old, right? You know, of course they're not, but that's what they look like, you know? So it's the, the MILF, you know, older Mrs. Robinson thing. And then big black cock in your ass, right? And literally (laughs) I get booked all the time with one scene on Monday with the 15 year old in the second. Well, well, they're not 15, really. Don't want to say right, that. Right. They're of age, but they look like they're young, right? And then the next day with the big black cock in my ass, right? But I, I haven't shot any of it for my OnlyFans. And, you know, all of my fans are like, you can't sell me any. And I was like, you guys have been so nice. I need to get some big black cock in my ass. So that's how the scene with Shawn Michaels ended up happening. And I'm I'm really happy because I think it's going to give us a really good opportunity to have a, a very important conversation because the BLM didn't just happen um, in, you know, the mainstream world. Anything that happens in, in big Hollywood happens in little Hollywood, i.e. the adult entertainment industry. So we've gone through a really heavy, you know, Me Too movement. Ron mm-hmm. Jeremy is in jail, just like Harvey right. Weinstein is. So, mm-hmm. you know, we have a very parallel universe of everything that's going on, goes on in our own little microcosm as well. And, um, you know, BIPOC is, um, what is it? Um, Black Indigenous People of Color was created um, within the adult industry so that people of color within the industry have a voice. Uh, and have a lot more resources and support. And my girl, Cinnamon Love, was the one that started that. And um, I'm fully in support of it. And it's been doing really great. And I'm, I'm, I'm really excited for, you know, a new generation to be in a business that's way more accepting than from where I came from. Yeah, nice. Um, you talked about, first of all, tell everyone where they can find you, because I saw your Twitter post and I looked yeah. at your wish list on Amazon. Yeah, You're fun. You're like, you love pink and glitter and stuff. I have oh, a girlfriend I'm, just like that. Well, you know what? I'm making a bimbo room. Oh, is that what you're doing? Yes, yes, yes. Because if you look here, if you look at my wonderful... I've got, this is my dream of genie wow. room here. Uh, nice. Right? Uh-huh. And then in the other room, I got a dungeon... And then, um, and then the other room we're building is a bimbo Barbie room because I really love the whole bimbo, uh, fetish, right? Uh Like, you know, shove a cock, you know, into my throat far enough so that all my brains goes out and I'm just, you know, like this plastic (laughs) cock sucking, loving nympho whore. I love it. (laughs) (laughs) Where can people find you? The best place to go is all my links um, forward slash uh, DJ Britstar. So it's all my links.com forward slash DJ Britstar because I DJ too. I know that you li- love the, the ditzy blonde thingy bimbo thing, right? You, yeah. You love that. You're actually anything but that. <laughs> That's I why mean, I like you, it. <laughs> yeah, which is great. If I was that, I probably would be offended. <laughs> Absolutely. You're right about that. That's the way it that's the way it happens. So more power to you. I, I won't ask your age, but if you've oh, been I'm in this 47. Bis- I'm 47. I embrace my age. I earned every one of those damn years, girlfriend. Yep. <laughs> Hashtag old bitches are trending. Oh, is it? <laughs> awesome. Oh, before we go. Yes, boo. Before we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Talk. As you're getting older. Yes. And especially you doing the work that you do where it mm-hmm. gets a lot of use down there. Yeah. Is there anything you can do? It, are there exercises? Are there like any words you can offer our female audience? Yes. There's there's lots of uh, laser treatments, exercises. Oh. Um, yeah. There's like all different kinds of places that you can go to with different kinds of laser treatments for both the inside, the outside. There's uh, labiaplasty that you can do for the outside. There's um, all kinds of Kegel muscle exercises. It's a muscle. So, you know, there's many different things you can do to keep it going. And guys don't care as much. They're just happy to have a hole, you know? (laughs) We overthink everything. You know what? And that's one of the things I love about this business. Like, not to be rude to some of these, what I would consider to be, you know, 
what's a what's the PC way of putting it, right? Like I work really hard to be like this blonde Barbie doll that's kind of like, you know, got everything perfected in the dream look, right? But there's other models in my business that look like they could be smoking meth at a truck stop. God bless. <laughs> they're not. And they're smart, savvy business women, right? And they've got millions of followers on Instagram and are yeah. making bank. They are not perfect. Their hair is all kinds of not politically correct. Their weight is not. They don't tan. Like they are not traditionally good looking women and men, every man I talk to is like, I want to fuck that bitch. Right. Like, you know, there's really some, something for, for everyone. And the more I talk to people, the more I find out that their people are turned on by just about everything. Yeah, it's so true. So, you know, it's us women that really, you know, pick ourselves apart. You know, I, I've got, um, what I like to call, uh, pap, fat ass pussy. So, <laughs> From being a MILF and being a sex worker for so long. And I can't afford the la uh, the labiaplasty right now. So I'm uh, making it a hashtag and I'm going to make it trending. So <laughs> everybody who wants the pap, go on Twitter and, and you know, make a trend. <laughs> the only person that cares about it is me. <laughs> Nobody else cares. Actually, some guys do. That's what they really want. So sometimes it's best. Well, just leave it alone, girlfriend. It's all good.